Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this super cute mini bunting. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again. As you can see, this super cute bunting would be great to run along the edge of um, shelving or even maybe pop it on a top of a cake. So we're going to learn exactly how to make these super cute little flags and how to join them with a chain at the end. Let's gather all the materials we need so we can start our project. I'm going to be using um, some DK or size 3 yarn or cotton. Um, this is actually a cotton blend, so it's 50% acrylic and 50% cotton. It's just some scrap that I've got that I want to use up. I'm using the corresponding hook size, which is a 4mm hook. You can, of course, use whatever size your yarn recommends. You're also going to need a darning needle, and I've moved them over here. You're going to need a pair of scissors. There are a few ends to weave in on this project. Let's get our first flag made. So all of these flags are worked from the bottom to the top. So we're going to increase to get the width on our flag. So the first thing we're going to do is to place a slip knot on our hook. I'm just going to tighten that to my hook by pulling on the working yarn. And we simply begin by chaining two. So we yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that gives us a chain of two, remembering that this one doesn't work, it doesn't count as a, a chain. And we're going to work two stitches into that first chain. So we're going to insert our hook under the top loop of that chain. And we're going to yarn over and bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two. So that completes our single crochet in US terms, and it's a double crochet in UK terms. We're going to work a second single crochet into that same chain space. So we just reinsert our hook in the same space, yarn over, bring a loop up, two loops on our hook, yarn over, and pull through both loops. So we've got stitch number one and stitch number two, and this one doesn't count. So that actually will create the point on our flag. So that's row one. We're going to yarn over and chain one and then turn our work going into row, row two. In this row, we're going to work into the stitch directly underneath that chain one. So right in there, we're going to place our hook going to yarn over, bring our loop up, two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two. So there we go. And we're going to place a second stitch. So we're going to increase the number of stitches by working another single crochet into that first stitch. So now we've worked two single crochets into the first stitch. And we're just going to place one single crochet into that last stitch. I can get my hook through there. Oops. I want to go underneath both loops of that stitch. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, in. Sorry, my cotton has split. There we go. I'm through. Bring the loop up. <laughs> Yarn over, pull through two. So we now have three stitches at the end of row two. We're going to yarn over and chain one to begin row three. From this row onwards, we're going to work all our increases internally. So rather than placing two single crochets into our first stitch, we're going to work our doubles into the middle stitch. So we're going to insert our hook into the stitch underneath the chain and work one single crochet. And then to the second stitch, we're going to place two single crochets. It's number one and number two. And then we place one final single crochet into that last stitch to complete row three. So our stitch count at the end of row three is four stitches. So we've increased by one. Chain one going into row three. So we're going to work one single crochet into the stitch underneath 
the chain. So that's one. And then we're going to work two single crochets into the next stitch. One. And two. And one single crochet into the two remaining stitches. So that's one and two. So again, we've increased once in this row. So it gives us a stitch count of five. One, two, three, four, and five. Going into row four, again, we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to work one single crochet into the stitch underneath our chain. Then we're going to increase into the second stitch. So that's number one. And number two. And then we're just going to work one single crochet into the three remaining stitches. So again, our stitch count increases by one. Number two. And, and number three. You can see that it actually hides, it stops massive holes being created. So we're going to chain one and turn for the last row. So working underneath that chain, do exactly the same again. So you place one single crochet and then two single crochets into the next stitch. And then in the four remaining stitches, you just work one single crochet. Number four. So that is our mini flag completed. I'm just going to yarn over and chain one to create a little knot so I can fasten off and leave enough yarn so that I can weave these ends in. So let's weave these in together and then we can go on and make the other five and I'll show you how to join them. So just insert the end through your needle. Remembering that this is going to be the front so you can see the stitches facing you. I'm going to weave in towards the back, just underneath or through the one of the loops of these stitches. So I'm looking through my camera so it's quite hard to see what I'm doing. And we're going to go in and out three times each, once each way. So that's one. I'm going out and one more. One more. There we go. So that's one way. And then we're going to come back the other way. Two. And a third time. Okay, so once you've done that three times, it's highly unlikely that your end will be seen. And it's on the back of the flag anyway. So we can just snip that off, not too close, just so that it lays flat. And then we're gonna do the same to the point. So we just pop our yarn on our needle. So that's the wrong way. So we're just going to weave these ends in. And I'm just gonna go up a little bit to try and And go up one more, I think. We don't want to lose that point, do we? It'll be pointless. And then you can just weave back the other way. I'm going to try and be clever and close this little gap with my tails. Just to help the shape. That's three times I've woven that in, so I doubt I will see that end again. Make sure that you haven't just pulled it really tight and pulled your flag out of shape. And then you can just snip that end. So that's flag number one made. So we need to make 
a further however many flags you want to make. I'm going to make another five, so I've got six in varying colours, and then we're going to join them all together. So press pause, get your other flags made, just re-watch this bit, you can just rewind it, and I'll catch up with you in a moment, and we'll join our flags together. So I have my various flags, and I'm going to use, actually I'm going to use the white to join these up, because I haven't got a lot of white. So we simply place a slip knot oops, onto our hook again in whatever colour you want to use to join. And just make that nice and tight. <clears throat> make sure all your flags are kind of facing the same way up so we can see which way we're going to place them. You can put them in the order that you want to do them in. So you're looking for your little stitches and keep those all at the top. There we go. That's that one. So place them in the order that you'd like them in. Let's move those around. There we go. So I'll do mine in that order, I think. And once your slip knot's on your hook, you can just pick up your first and insert your hook underneath the first stitch. And we're simply going to pull my tail. We're going to just yarn over and pull through and pull straight through the loop on your hook. We're going to slip stitch across the top. So we're just working into each stitch across. Pull through and pull straight through the loop on your hook. Through each stitch on your flag. And this will kind of create a chain on top of your bunting, which will match on all of them. So it looks really sweet. Sure you work all of the stitches and then in between each flag we're simply just going to do a little chain one and then you pick up your next flag find that stitch to work into insert your hook into the first stitch and just yarn over pull through it's caught Pull through, simple as that, eh? and then pull through the loop on your hook. And that creates a lovely little space without creating too big a space between them. Let me check what I've done here. Oh, it's turned itself. Let me try that one again. So we're just going to chain one in between and then insert your hook into the first stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and straight through the loop on your hook. And then work your way across, slip stitching between each, into each stitch across the top of your little mini flag. You can put more chains in between if you'd like a bigger space between them. But because they're mini, I wanted to keep mine close together. So I've got a chain one in between and then I can pick up my next flag, pop it onto my hook, onto that first stitch, there we go, nearly missed a stitch there. And you just slip stitch through, and I can't slip in again, and through the loop on your hook and just keep working all the way along until all your flags are attached. I hope you've enjoyed this crochet tutorial. I would love to see where you place your mini bunting. If you're gonna pop it on the top of a cake, if you're gonna have streams and streams along your yarn stash shelves i might do that one myself so that we can read and obviously share that with me let me have a look to see where you put your mini bunting you can find me over on instagram um, or you can find me on facebook and of course don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this tutorial to create your own little mini bunting